course, I'm sure all of you understand, I am always longing for something that has to do with Gila. Perhaps a memory, a story, something that I could embrace and something that refreshes and reawakens my understanding, my relationship and rapport with her when she was alive, obviously even after she is long gone. And it's something that a person who loses someone who's so close to them can only understand this desperate longing to be able to hold on to that person in some form or fashion, even when they are no longer physically able to do so. This past week, I uh, had an experience whereby on Motzei Shabbat, when I was davening, I was completely enveloped by emotions, and it happens various times during the week or during days, and all of a sudden, you'll just lose yourself and burst out crying and find yourself in a state of despair. And I had that experience during Tfilat Arvit, last Motzei Shabbat, and I asked myself, or I said, please, Gila, just give me another sign. Give me a sign that you're with us. I know that you are. I want to believe that you are. But nonetheless, it's it's good to have a refresher once in a while. It makes one feel good. And immediately after uh, Havdalah, I went upstairs and I got myself my cell phone. I turned on my phone. And the first message that I got on my phone immediately after Shabbat was from a woman a person who I know from Chutz Aretz, from the United Kingdom. She sent me a message that I obviously didn't receive before Shabbat, and she said there that she had heard me speak about the wondrous personality, the giving of Gila herself. And she heard a story about how Gila gave flowers to someone. I'm not sure I remember that exact story, but she said that it encouraged her as a result of that story, she realized what was going on around her, corona, loneliness, people who are left or put aside and might not have necessarily benefited from social contact in the last few months. And so she decided that because of the story about Gila, she was going to go out and buy flowers as well and give them out to a number of people who she knew probably were experiencing loneliness in this uh, past few months during this period of time. And she went and before Shabbat, she gave out flowers and she came to one particular person. She gave them the flowers and she said that their faces just lit up with happiness and with joy. And they were so appreciative. And they said it had been so long since they had been able to have contact with someone, speak with someone, certainly to receive flowers from someone. And they said that this would really make their Shabbat. And it was at that moment that I realized that probably from a Jewish perspective or from a spiritual perspective, the greatest way in which we make impact or the greatest way in which we make contact with one another is vis-a-vis -vis the way or the means, the actions that we pass on to the next person. The impact that we have with our personalities and how that person will embrace those traits, qualities, characteristics in their lives and behave as such, following the lead of someone that they learned from, even if that person is no longer here. In fact, even more so perhaps when that person is no longer here physically. Nonetheless, the messages that they transcribe and then transmit can be so effective in our lives and carrying a future. And I think that this is also the message with regards to a particular verse in this week's parsha. The Torah says, Som tasim alecha melech. Place and put on yourselves a melech, a king, for the Jewish people. And many of the commentaries discuss that this is a very strange pasuk, som tasim, the double vernacular, alecha melech, even though during the time of Shaul melech, B'nai Israel were criticized for asking for a king for themselves. Many of the comments explain that the difference is there. They said som tasim or tasim lanu, melech bi Israel, as opposed to alecha. Lanu is a selfish reason. It's selfish incentive where a person wants for their own personal benefits. Whereas som tasim alecha, 
Alecha means a mata de shamayim mutelet alecha. The fear of God is upon you. Upon you implies that you are looking for a greater altruistic reason to have that leadership. You're looking for them to influence you so that you can influence your own lives and hopefully as a result of that influence more people around you as well. And I think that this is also the explanation of the double vernacular, som tasim. When a person is som lasim, to put something upon yourself, that might be with selfish incentive. When it's som tasim, you're looking not only to institute and inculcate that institution, but you're looking for that institution tasim to further advance those ideals, those practices, those ideas in society. And I think this is what the Torah is telling us. Som tasim alecha, not just for you, but for the values that a melech can infuse. If it's the right person, if it's a righteous person, if it's the correct person who has no self agenda, but rather the interest of Am Yisrael and of course the interest of HaKadosh Baruch Hu upon them, then it will be som. They will have been placed upon the Jewish people, tasim, for the sake of the Jewish people to place his values onto others, to pass on those ideals to a future generation and to the rest of the Jewish people. This is the concept, this is the effect that we want to have from leadership. And I find it fascinating and very, very encouraging and a positive vibe when I think about the fact that Gila might not be here physically, but that her leadership, so to speak, was som tasim. It wasn't just that she was here in this world for the sake of doing what she did, but really she has proven, even in her demise, that she was here as well for the values that she could continue to imprint upon the Jewish people, to imprint upon those people who are giving flowers to people around them who might be lonely, to imprint those people who might need that sensitivity and care. That is the effect that she had. And I think this is the message that we should take with us approaching this Chodesh Elul. Chodesh Elul is a month in which we once again reinstate the kingdom of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the kingdom of Hashem in preparation of Rosh Hashanah, the day of Hachtara, of kinging or crowning our ultimate king, Melech Machem Lachim HaKadosh Baruch Hu. But it's not just for the sake of recognizing Hashem's greatness and His certainly his ability to affect this world, but it's som tasim. It's recognizing his effect so that we can have more effect on our lives and we can affect more the people around us to take upon ourselves for the sake of certainly transmitting that message further. Mir Tashem, we should be zocha to do this, to follow this particular way, the Gila way. Shabbat Shalom.